Hey guys, you know what's putting me in a really good mood? This is the last of these bell ringers that we're going to do for a little while. We're going to take a break next week. I don't like to do too much of the same thing again and again and again. So after, I think this week we're, we'll, um, we'll do something a little different and then we'll come back to these after we've had a break. All right, daily fact family. Ooh, it's the 12s. These are a little tougher. Okay, so 9 times 12 is 108. Factor times factor equals, what's the answer? What do we call that? The answer to a multiplication problem. It's the product. And then do you remember what property tells us that we can flip flop our nine by 12 and still get the same product? You remember when you learned about arrays? Probably did this in like third and fourth grade. Nine times 12 or 12 times nine. You can do it either way and still get the same product. That's the commutative property. All right, now for division, we have to take our dividend and divide it by our divisor to get a quotient. Okay, time for measurement. Let's see, feet to inches. I'm converting feet, which makes me think of like your basic wooden school ruler, right? One foot equals 12 inches. Foot, feet to inches, so that means we are going, nay, horse to fly. Yes, I know. I do draw an amazing horse. Thank you for noticing. Horse to bzz, 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 fly, multiply. Okay, so 10 feet times 12 inches in a foot gives us 120 inches altogether. And then we're going to take our 180 inches, divide that by 12 inches in a foot because fly to horse, divide of course. 108 divided by 12, oh gosh, I'm in trouble now. What's 12 times eight? 10 times eight is 80, two times eight is 16, so it can't be that. I wonder what 12 times nine, could that be it? 10 times nine is 90, and two, yes, two times nine is 18, and 90 plus 18 is 108, okay. All right, true confession, you guys. Sometimes I don't remember all of my 12 tables. Isn't that awful? But luckily I have these strategies to help me figure it out. Even if I don't remember my 12s, I just kind of puzzle it out by using facts that I do know. Okay, so 12 times 9 feet would give us our 108 inches. So that means that 108 inches is equal to 9 feet. Okay, let's keep going. Just keep going, just keep going. Okay, let's see. Volume. The measure of the inside space. You're welcome. Today I was singing for you and drawing for you. Now this is a perfect cube, which means we can multiply length times width times height. These ones are more simple to do than the ones where it's like an irregular, um, an irregular figure with like pieces missing. You know those that we've done in the past few days where I'm breaking it apart into different pieces? I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that for this because I just do three cubes wide by three cubes long and then multiply that by my height which is also three cubes high. So that's just three times three times three. Easy. Three times three is nine, and nine times three is 27 cubic inches. So that means that this rectangular prism is made up of 27 cubes, all stuck together. 
All right, let's see. What do we still need to do? This guy. Now, would you say that this shape is a polygon or not a polygon? I'm going to just jot that down. Polygon or not polygon. And the reason I'm wondering that is because I see curved lines here, and I always thought that polygons did not have curved lines, only straight lines for polygons. So you guys tell me what you think about that. And then I'm also noticing that this is a symmetrical shape. It has one line of symmetry right down the middle. If I fold it in half along this red line, the two halves will match perfectly. It has one line of symmetry. Whereas if I fold it in, folded it in half going another way, like say I did it this way, this half of the heart would not match this green half. So that's why I say it only has that one line of symmetry. It only has one way that we could fold it. Okay, line plot. I think that's all we have to do left is just our line plot. Good. Line plot. Got to make my x-axis. Got to choose my intervals. Let's see, lowest value. I'm going to do 25. You could make the first interval on your line plot be a 27. Personally, just me, I prefer to start with a more regular number. I don't know. It's just, it's just something that it, it's like one of my little hangups. I don't know, but you don't have to. Okay. And then highest value looks like it's 34. So I'm just going to make it a 35 because that, I guess the reason I like to do it that way is because it's easier for me to see what my intervals are going to be. Oh, wait, I didn't put that in the right place. If I have a multiple of five or a multiple of 10 at the beginning and the end, it just makes it easier for me to see what my intervals are going to be. I guess that's really why I do it that way. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. Okay, let me fix that. 35. Okay, let's start. 27, 28, 30, 29. 30, 29, 31, 27, 29, 34, 29. Which value is the mode? Remember, the mode is the, the, um, the value that has the greatest number of pieces of data. So you guys include that in your answer, which number is the mode, and also tell me what the range is. The range, if you don't remember, is the lowest value to the highest value. I'll give you a hint, 25 is not the lowest value. I don't have any data for 25, and I also don't have any data for 26. So the range should not start with 25 or 26. Okay, toodles!